My name is Nikki Gio, and I'm with the City of Vancouver Stormwater Program down here in Southwest Washington. And this morning, we're going to talk about pollution prevention for food trucks and mobile vendors. And we're going to get started this morning. I'm going to cover a little bit of this presentation, and then Vicki Barthels from Spokane Regional Health District is going to jump on and talk a little bit about um, her experience with food trucks. So there we go. All right, we're going to take a beat this morning to talk about our sponsors. So this webinar is brought to you by the Washington Department of Ecology and a Stormwater Financial Assistance Program grant, a stormwater activity grant uh, specifically focused on pollution prevention as it relates to stormwater and keeping pollution out of our storm drains um, in our municipal stormwater systems. So although the project is sponsored by the Department of Ecology, um, they don't necessarily um, endorse any of the materials or recommend any of the vendors that we talk about and just wanted to um, say thank you to the Department of Ecology for helping us put on this webinar and create these resources on the Washington Stormwater Center. Today we're going to talk about only rain down the drain, best practices, waste management, litter and trash, wastewater and wash water and staff training and site prep. And these are kind of the, the overview for our food truck pollution prevention uh, tips and tricks. And we'll have time for questions. Um, if you have uh, anything you comes up as we are talking, then put it in the Q&A down below and we can answer that or we'll be able to answer questions at the end. So we're gonna talk a lot about the how through this presentation. We're going to get into all the details and we want to start with the why. The why is really important. Why do we care about pollution prevention? <clears throat> the top reason, you know, we kind of think about this as a business, a food truck is a business, a mobile vendor is a business, and healthy communities, you know, where we don't have pollution, where we have good housekeeping and we have clean water, uh, those are good for business. People want to go there, they want to spend time in those communities, uh, they want to walk around, you know, food trucks. <clears throat> and be outside and enjoy that setting. So when we prevent pollution and we have, you know, our streets are clean, our storm systems are clean, uh, people want to spend time there. That's good for business. Customers care about the businesses that they spend time and money with. Uh, they want to know that you're doing the right thing. They want to know that you're protecting clean water and the environment. Um, that's an important value in the Northwest. It's definitely an important value in Vancouver. The picture down there in the corner as a family spending time along the Columbia River with Mount Hood in the background. Um, our waterfront is very important to us. It's, you know, we've got a waterfront trail. We've got miles of beaches. This is, these water resources are very important to our community. Um, and, you know, worst case scenario, fines and cleanup costs can be really expensive. And so when we're thinking about preventing pollution, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? And so anything you can do to prevent pollution is just going to save you those costs on, on cleanup and potentially having um, fines and code violations in the jurisdiction where you're operating. And we want to talk about so I don't, broadly, really quick, about stormwater and why the connection to stormwater and food trucks or mobile vendors is important. And when we think about how our cities are built, we have all these hard surfaces, roofs and roads and parking lots. And we also get a lot of rain in the Northwest and even on the east side of the state, you know, we do get a lot of rain. And when we have those hard surfaces, we get those rain events, the rain just runs off. And a lot of our communities are designed to get that water away from the roads, away from the businesses, you know, for flood control. But that means that water is moving really quickly and it takes a lot of trash and chemicals and pollutants into our storm drains. You know, on the way that rain is washing down the streets, it's going through the gutter, uh, it's picking up cigarette butts and leaves and you know, pine needles, all of that stuff and taking it into the storm drains. And our storm drains, you know, designed as mostly as flood control, they take that water right to a receiving body. So a river, a stream, a lake, um, those storm drains don't go to a treatment plant in most places. Um, there are some places where there can be exceptions, but you really want to think about storm drains as a direct line to our surface waters. And so when we're talking about pollution prevention, that connection from the rain running off all those hard surfaces to that trash ending up in our creeks and streams, it's a really direct connection. This, this illustration is showing that 
um, in a couple of different places. And it's uh, something we really want to think about in terms of preventing pollution. The good housekeeping stuff we do on hard surfaces goes a long way. And if you get nothing else out of the presentation, if you don't remember all the details, all the little, uh, you know, fine level details, only rain down the drain is what you need to remember. This is the bottom line. This is our slogan. <laughs> um, and not just for one city, these, you know, these are multiple different jurisdictions have these drain markers. So you'll see these um, little signs put on the storm drains, only rain down the drain. We really only want to see rainwater going into those storm drains because they connect to our surface waters. Um, they can go to groundwater and our drinking water. You might get your drinking water from surface water. So it's really important to keep that clean. And there's something that you can do. That's why we're doing these pollution prevention webinars is to empower you to make better choices to help us keep our waters clean. And so there are things that you can do and we want everybody to be able to to do their part to help us have only rain down the drain. So anything that is on the street or in the gutter line can be washed into the storm drain. So that includes things like trash, um, oil and grease, um, any food waste, you know, if you've got um, areas where people are eating, if you've got prep areas, um, all of that stuff can be washed into a storm drain. Um, even if you're dumping things out in a landscape area or on the ground, that can be washed into a storm drain. And in most cities, having anything but storm water in a storm drain is prohibited. So that's where we get into those code violations and potential um, fees and fines. You know, if you don't prevent the pollution, uh, you might be in a position to, to end up with a citation. So we really want to emphasize it's only rain down the drain uh, for a lot of good reasons, including our surface waters, but also because it's, it's the law, it's required. So some of the best practices we think about, what can you do? How can you prevent pollution in your food truck or with your staff? And the most important thing is to train them. Talk to them before the shift starts. Talk to them about uh, where you're going to be locating your food truck, where what festivals you're going to be going to, help them understand what the expectation is. So that whatever shift it is, whatever event it is, whatever location, if you're moving around town, your team knows what to do. They know about good housekeeping. They know about cleaning up spills. Um, that's a really, really important thing that you can do to help lead that uh, effort to prevent pollution. You want to set up your truck for success. You want to go through, do that walkthrough before you go to your next location or before you open up for the weekend or maybe that, that special event. You want to look for leaks. You want to fix anything that's leaking, dripping. And if you have any spills, clean those up as soon as they happen. You know, don't wait for shift change. Don't wait for a lull. Um, in the crowds, you know, put down some absorbent, get those spills cleaned up right away. And if you need to store materials, especially things like fryer grease, um, liquids that, you know, can have a potential to really go far in stormwater, put them in a container or a covered area. So keep them in a Rubbermaid tub or keep them in, um, you know, a vehicle, maybe keep them in your truck rather than in your food prep area. Uh, make sure that they're not stored next to or over a storm drain just to help prevent uh, spills, give you that extra little bit of time to respond if someone knocks it over, if it gets a hole in the container, um, you just want to be prepared for spills. When we're talking about waste management, there's a lot that you can do to help prevent pollution. So the biggest thing is to keep your trash bagged up and put into the trash containers, whether it's these little rolling carts or a big dumpster, make sure you keep the lids closed, um, recycle what you can, but this photo is showing, you know, even recycled materials, they need to be put into their container. So you don't want to bag that cardboard that you're going to put into a cardboard recycling container, but you don't want to mix it with trash and leave it sitting outside either. Um, you want that cardboard to be nice and dry so it can be recycled. So be thinking about how you're managing your waste. Um, if you're moving around town, if you're going to different events, find out where those containers are, where you need to be going during the event, how far does staff have to carry things, you know, plan ahead and make sure that you're not having any liquid waste go into your trash. If you have things like 
um, wash water or cooking oil, if you put those into these kitchen garbage bags, they leak into the dumpsters and they really create a mess. They can also, you know, lead to spills, leaks and drips on the way to the trash container. So keep any dr liquid waste dry by mixing it with something like kitty litter or sawdust, um, even paper waste if you need to, just something that makes that liquid so it's not just free moving in the bag. So, you know, you put the bag in the dumpster and it all leaks out. You really want to avoid that. That'll help prevent pollution. And then if you have things like solvents and cleaners, things that aren't food waste, um, you know, if you're using some kind of disinfectants, really keep those separate from your trash so that you can properly dispose of them. A lot of those materials shouldn't be going into the regular trash with your other food prep materials. Um, you want to take those to a household hazardous waste uh, facility for proper disposal and just keeping those out of the trash is just safer for your staff, it's safer for the garbage haulers. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, you definitely don't want that stuff spilling. And so some of these photos are showing, you know, the good and bad. So the top, there are some good examples. You see the lids are closed. You see there's a special separate drum for cooking oil. You know, so no one's putting liquids in their dumpster. They're putting that into this drum and it's being recycled. So check at your event space, check at your food cart pod, see if there's a food used uh, food oil container that you can uh, put your material in. And then these examples are where people are mixing a lot of their recycling with their trash. Um, the photo on the left, they have a lot of loose trash. You want to make sure that stuff is bagged. Um, even though you've got the boxes you're kind of storing it in, uh, there's a potential for that stuff to blow away, to get kicked over. You know, rainwater can fall on that. So you really want to keep it bagged. And then the photo in the middle down there, is showing used cooking oil where there's been a lot of leaks and drips around the container. Um, so there's actually food grease on the pavement and that's a big issue for stormwater. That grease clogs pipes. It's really wreaks havoc on storm drains. So you wanna make sure that any of your used cooking oil, um, you've got it in a container that your staff can carry that they can easily get into uh, that drum or dumpster and they're cleaning up spills as they happen. Um, you know, don't, don't leave those leaks and drips and go finish your shift. You know, that material will just get into a storm drain. So all of these waste management um, issues, you can think ahead, you know, check your location, talk to your staff, make sure that they've got space to store bag trash. They've got, you know, a clear path to take that material for disposal and that they're able to clean up spills and leaks as soon as they happen. And talking about cleaning up, we want to touch on safer cleaners a little bit, um, you know, especially when you're in the close confines of a food truck, you want to use safer products to protect not only your staff, but also the environment, you know, when you have uh, different cleaning products that you need to use for, especially for food service, you want to be careful about mixing chemicals. Um, you don't want to have any sort of safety issues, especially in a really small confined area. If you have any, um, if you mix these chemicals, you may create a dangerous gas and in that really small space, it's going to be a, a really big problem for safety for your staff. So where you can think about your cleaners and think about using some safer materials. So some examples here on the left, these are the logos that we're, we're showing. Uh, you wanna be looking for products that have either safer choice, designed for the environment, cradle to cradle, look for these logos on the package. That means they're a safer choice. That means that the chemicals that they're using are safer. Uh, and then when we're looking at the bottom graphic here, we're talking about reading your labels. So you want to look for a product that has one of these safer choice labels. Um, that's going to be the safest, not only for your staff, but for the environment. If you do have a spill, somebody drops it, somebody spills it, uh, they're going to be the least uh, polluting chemicals. And then you want to think about if the product doesn't have one of those labels, it might be safe enough, safe to use, safe for your food truck but you want to be careful about spills. You want to think about that, again, ventilation in that small space. Then we start to move to somewhat harmful if they have caution or warning. Make sure that you're properly storing those. These are the products you don't want to put in the regular trash. You want to make sure they're being disposed of properly, training your staff on how to use them. If you need to use a really strong chemical, like one of the ones on the right that says danger or poison, 
use just as little as you can. Make sure that you're not storing it, um, you know, long term on your food truck if you can help it. And really think about if you can change out some of those chemicals for one of these safer choices. If there's a product that you're looking for, um, see if there's another product that will help in that same task. <clears throat> Here is a great resource specifically for food trucks. It's from the University of Washington. It's a partnership with the Washington State Food Truck Association. They have a website, it's called cleanshift.weebly.com. And it talks about these six steps for safer cleaners, specifically on food trucks. And their whole program is everyone cleans, everyone eats, everyone uses chemicals. This is how to do it safely. They talk about the difference between cleaning and disinfecting. They go through different products that you can use. There are great videos, a lot of great resources. We really encourage you to check out this website for more information. Um, and they point out in the materials, there are thousands of products that are certified by third-party organizations. So those safer choice designed for the environment, cradle to cradle, there's so many choices out there. If you have a specific need, there's a task you have to do and you feel like you've got to have one of these dangerous products, contact the Washington Food Truck Association and they can help you kind of brainstorm around what are some alternatives, how can you get away from using um, one of these dangerous chemicals, really for your staff, but also for the environment. Anything that you're carrying with you can be spilled, dropped, leak onto the ground and get into our storm system. So uh, check out Clean Shift for more information on cleaning products. And this is where we're gonna have Vicki join us from the Spokane Regional Health District. And she's gonna talk a little bit about litter and trash in food trucks and preventing pollution. Thanks, Nikki. Um, so I'm Vicki, uh, Nikki and Vicki. <laughs> I'm Vicki Bartels with Spokane Regional Health District. I, um, my background is actually, I was a food inspector for 13 years before I went into the pollution prevention program. So I've worked with a lot of food trucks. I've worked at a lot of events as well. So these, um, the areas that I'm gonna talk about are some of the areas where um, we definitely see problems and it's very easy problems that could be, have been avoided prior to even going to your events. So talking about litter and trash. So as Nikki mentioned, trash is a pollutant when it enters the storm drains. So if you have litter or trash around your workspace, we wanna make sure that you clean that up immediately. Um, so a couple of different methods and the method that we prefer individuals to use would be um, the dry cleaning method, which is using a broom or in the top photo, you'll see a shovel. So using dry methods to sweep up and pick up that trash before it gets into a storm drain. The other option is the wet cleaning method, which is something that we do not want individuals to use. So we don't want, if you have a spill or something, we don't want you using a power washer or a hose to pressure wash those to the storm drain. Again, we don't want that getting into our storm drain. So um, always using those dry methods first. And the bottom photo, um, it looks like we had some sort of an incident. They've got some caution tape around and they've got their absorbent. It looks like their kitty litter that they've been picking, um, they were picking up that from a spill. Um, so that's another option for dry method is using that absorbent such as a kitty litter or absorbent pads to um, pick up any type of spills. And then just making sure that you're checking your truck and your surroundings before you leave the area. Um, you wanna make sure that you leave the area, if not in better shape than it was when you guys got to the event. So um, wash water and wastewater. So we wanna make sure that all wash water um, being used for cleaning must be held on board until it can be properly discharged to an approved sanitary sewer. So um, whether it's a clean out or a mop sink, um, again, we don't want to take that wash water and dump it, um, like my photo with the big X, um, dumping it down to some sort of a drainage system. Um, so making sure that you're taking it back to your restaurant or your commissary kitchen, um, or if you are, if your restaurant or your commissary kitchen or your home is on a septic, uh, septic tank, um, maybe a preferred pumper might be a better option for you. Um, having somebody come out and actually um, pick up that gray water from your food cart. So when you are looking at preferred pumpers, you want to make sure that you're looking for pumpers that will remove the gray water from food carts. 
Um, we definitely do not want this wash water getting into a septic tank if you are on a septic tank because it can mess up your septic tank. Or another option is um, taking it to an RV station to dump your product or going to a local wastewater treatment plant. But if you are gonna use a wastewater treatment plant, I would recommend giving them a call ahead of time to find out if there are certain time periods where you need to do that, um, locations. Um, so just giving them a call ahead of time and making sure that would be an option for you. And then another, you know, another reason where you might use a preferred pumper is if you're at an event for an extended period, like a fair, and you're going to be there for a week, um, and you don't have the means to discard um, that water. So maybe contacting a pumper or somebody to come and pump out that mobile unit, the gray water um, for your event, because you don't want to open up the drain and let it go all over the um, surface that you're on. Okay, so again, proper disposing of your wastewater, um, your melted ice water. Um, ice does have some, um, you know, fluorides um, and other things, or depending on what products was, were sitting inside the ice that you were cooling products. So um, any melted ice water, we wanna make sure that that's properly disposed of. Sanitizing water, um, we don't want you to dump that sanitizer outside because you don't want to you don't want to fill up your gray tanks. So making sure that you're properly disposing that as well. Um, I was at an event here over in Spokane, and um, of course, if you're familiar with Spokane, you know that the Spokane River runs through our town, and the event was along in Riverfront Park at you know with the Spokane River right there and um, witnessed a vendor dumping out their sanitizing water into the river. So big no-no there, definitely talk to them about that. Um, again, if you've got portable hand washing station, so if you've had to expand your mobile unit and you've got a portable hand washing station outside, um, again, same thing with that, with that wash water, we wanna make sure that it's getting disposed of properly and you're not just dumping it on the ground or in the river or another water body. Um, and then in the picture on the top, you can see the discharge portion for this mobile unit. Again, making sure that you are disposing of that properly. We don't want you to open it up and drive down the road with uh, your gray water being emptied. So <laughs> make sure that you're um, taking that to the RV or um, your commissary kitchen or your restaurant to dispose of that. And then down below, there's a picture. You can kind of see the black pipe going into a ravine and you see some of that soapy water. So again, um, just being familiar with your surroundings, making sure you're not discharging to um, any local waterways or the ground. And then inside your mobile units, you're gonna have some of those ventilation filters as well as um, some sort of a mat, rubber mat or different types of mat. So making sure that those ventilation hoods are being cleaned um, at your restaurant or your approved commissary, or if you have a company that comes and cleans them, um, just making sure that you're not doing that over a storm drain in a parking lot. Um, when I was a food inspector, I witnessed a restaurant that would take their ventilation hoods and put them outside in the parking lot and power wash them down, um, going directly to a storm drain. So um, just making sure that we're not um, taking them outside and doing that. We don't want that grease or other debris getting into our storm water and polluting. And like Mickey, Nikki mentioned earlier, you know, if a stormwater individual came by an inspector and saw that, there's some hefty fines that could be put your way for doing that. So um, just making sure that you're cleaning those in your three compartment sink or another approved method inside your facility. Um, again, obviously you don't wanna wash out your ventilation hoods in your food prep sink. So um, if you have questions about what sinks you can use, um, when in doubt, always contact your local food inspector and they can help um, guide you and make sure that you're doing those in the appropriate sinks and the appropriate manner. And again, same thing with the floor mats. We don't want those floor mats being washed outside. Either have your linen service come and wash the floor mats or you can wash them inside as well, but don't wanna take those outside and power wash because you could be looking at some hefty penalties for um, 
polluting the storm drains. Um, wash water and wastewater. I know Mickey, Nikki mentioned um, spill response and having your spill kits. Um, spill kits, as you can see here, and I apologize for the click to add text, um, it can be as simple as having a plastic bag labeling and an absorbent like kitty litter or a broom. Um, it can be as small as a five gallon bucket. It doesn't have to be a big, huge production. Um, and then making sure that you're using those absorbents if you have a spill. So in the photo down below, um, you'll see a white kind of milky substance and it's kind of hard to see, but you've got the, the white socks from the spill kit that are around the storm drain. And then you've got absorbent pads outside of that, protecting that, um, trying to protect that white, I'm gonna call it a milky water, um, getting into that storm drain. And then um, spill kits. So spill kits can be found on Amazon, at your local home improvement stores like Home Depots, or you can contact your local pollution prevention specialist and we can work with you to get a spill kit if you need one. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the pollution prevention program and how you can get a hold of us here towards the end. And then again, cleaning up a spill as soon as it happens. Um, we don't wanna let it set and get into that storm drain and pollute. We wanna get that cleaned up ASAP. Huh. And then um, restocking your supplies for your spill kit as needed. So when you use stuff, make sure that you're restocking it um, so that the next time if something happens, you go to grab your spill kit and you're like, whoa, we're empty. Didn't realize somebody used all the materials. Um, so making sure that if you do use it, that you are notifying your owner operator if you're an employee or um, if you're an owner operator, you know, getting those products um, restocked as soon as possible so that if it happens again, you don't run into a situation where you don't have any products to clean up the spill. And then another important piece is making sure that you're showing your staff how to properly use those spill kits. Um, so for example, I went to a restaurant over here in Spokane. They had dumped some grease out um, into the parking lot. And I showed them how to use their spill kit that they had, talked to them about the absorbent such as kitty litter, went back the next day and um, staff didn't show the um, employees how to use it. The employees just went and kind of threw the products down, um, not really understanding that process. So um, making sure that you um, really explain how to use the process and what each product is for in the spill kit. And then it goes back to, you know, training your staff and site prep. So train staff on those best practices, um, making sure that um, your staff is trained on these best, best practices. They're less likely to create a situation that's going to cause pollution. Um, so if you tell your staff, you know, if you are taking your grease barrel, let's say you're at an, at an event and they've got um, oil containers that you can take your grease to and you've got your wagon that you're taking your grease to that um, commissary kitchen to discard of your grease and halfway through you hit a bump and down goes the, the bucket of grease. You wanna make sure that staff know how to properly clean that up and get that taken care of right away. So um, really training your staff to make sure that they know what to do in case of a situation like that were to happen. And then really familiarizing yourself with your site um, where you're gonna operate ahead of time is key. Um, so here's a couple of photos. Um, the photo on my right is a great photo of Riverfront Park and the Spokane River. We have a lot of events that take place in Riverfront Park. So um, you wanna make sure that, um, you know, are you talking to your um, event coordinators, planners ahead of time saying, is my, where's my, where's my food truck going to be located? Am I going to be located on the pavement? Am I going to be located on grass? Um, you know, am I going to have access to sewer and water and dumpsters, or do I need to provide that ahead of time? Do I have somebody that can come and um, empty out my gray tanks? Is this a uh, an option from the event. Um, some of our bigger events that go on here, they have um, services that come out and will drain 
um, the gray tanks for individuals. But it's important to know ahead of time if those services are going to be available for you, because if they're not going to be available, then you need to realize that, oh, okay, I'm going to be here for seven days. They are not going to have access where I can have my gray water tank dumped. So I'm gonna to need to coordinate with a preferred pumper to come out to the event ahead of time, or I'm gonna to have to move my mobile unit to take it to my commissary or an RV dump to um, dump that gray water. So it's really important when you are going to these events, just making sure you know as much about the site location um, ahead of time so that you can be overprepared. I always say it's better to be overprepared than underprepared because you would hate to get an event, get all set up and then realize, oh, they don't have somebody who's going to come and pump my gray tank. I didn't plan for that. Um, so, you know, or, hey, I'm going to be set up on grass. I didn't bring um, the product. I didn't bring a tarp to lay down. Um, so just really being prepared and then preparing for the weather. You, um, we live in the Pacific Northwest. You never know if it's going to rain, snow, sleet, hail, or it's going to be sunny. So preparing yourself for all the different elements that we might come across. Um, and then here's just some examples of where we could have used best practice training. So the first one is at an event um, here in Spokane, they have a commissary, commissary kitchen provided. Um, you'll kind of see, we've got some grease and wash water draining down and you can kind of follow that going directly to the storm drain. Um, another thing is they've got the food service truck was parked directly over that storm drain. So we wanna make sure that if you are preparing for an event, um, if you're an event coordinator or if you're even a, a, a vendor, you want to make sure that you're not parking your mobile units on or near um, a storm drain. So talking to the promoter, I'm like, we need to relocate the food service truck and we need to put some sort of a sock around the storm drain, um, making sure that nothing, if something were to leak from the truck, that it's not gonna get into that storm drain. And then as well, talking to them about, you know, the grease and the wash water. Um, this actually happened because there, it rained right before the event. And we had some grease that got onto the, the lid of the um, oil container and the water got onto it and washed it right down and went down to the storm drain. Um, so again, going back to familiarizing yourself with your location, or is there a storm drain near you? If there is, um, you know, making sure that you're checking your mobile units for any leaks. Do I need to have a sock to put around that storm drain if something were to happen? Doing my due diligence prior to the event, making sure that, um, you know, I am properly set up so that if worst case scenario happens, I've already been prepared and I am good to go. Um, the other one is dumpster, dumpster maintenance. So when Nikki was talking about dumping liquids into the trash, this is an example of a business that was dumping their fryer grease into their dumpster. Um, they definitely needed to increase uh, frequency of dumpster dis, uh, deliveries, pickups, because um, they were way past their capacity. And then in the right, you can see the grease. So they were dumping their fryer oil into the dumpster. Um, and you can see how it was leaking and that leaked all the way to a dry well. So talk to them about cleaning it up, talk to them about, um, you know, making sure that we're not dumping and this is why. Um, and then we ended up working with this business to get them a um, grease container. So if you're a business, if you're a mobile unit and you also own a restaurant and you're taking your product back to your restaurant, you're taking your grease, whatnot, making sure that it's going into those grease cans and not into the dumpster is the main um, emphasis here. And then here's some best practices. So you've got nice clean dumpster area. I know Nikki kind of already touched on this. We've got the lids closed and then your used oil container, it's labeled, it's closed. Um, it's nice and neat underneath so we don't have a whole bunch of spillage. And then um, we talk, oh, and then some examples of secondary containment. So if you do have waste oil or something and you know that you have to set it outside, um, some easy examples of secondary containment would be just a little blue kiddie pool 
or even um, in the photo below the bus tubs that you're putting your dirty dishes in. That could be um, a use for secondary containment as well. So just wanted to give you some options. You don't have to go and spend a fortune trying to figure out um, a secondary containment. You can use something as simple as a bus, an extra bus tub or two at your facility or um, getting a, a nice little kiddie pool if that works for you as well. And then, uh, always a good rule of thumb. When in doubt, always ask. So if you have questions about permitting or acceptable practices, um, always check with your local health department or district um, to make sure that you are doing what they recommend. So laying down tarps versus um, laying down cardboard. I know for food, we don't want cardboard being laid down. We would rather have a tarp. So just when in doubt, always check with your health department, your health inspector, um, making sure that you're doing what they want you to do as well. And then um, also checking with labor and industries um, for any specific requirements that they might have for your mobile unit. I do know they have some requirements for mobile units. And then the Department of Ecology, our Pollution Prevention Assistance Program is statewide. And I will show you the map here soon. And in summary, the big takeaways, um, you know, make sure that you don't dump or wash anything down the storm drain. Using those dry cleanup methods first. So using the mop, the shovel, or your an absorbent or kitty litter. And then really training your staff on those best, best practices. So if you are an owner operator and you have to leave to go get more food or product or whatnot, you know that your mobile unit is in the best hands because you've trained your staff on those best practices and you don't have to worry about having a staff member dumping their sanitizing bucket out into the Spokane River. Um, so really that's a, a key point is making sure that your staff is also trained. It's not just the owners, the managers, it's everyone that's gonna be affiliated with that mobile business. Inspecting those mobile units for leaks and fix those immediately. So um, before you're getting ready to head out to an event, you know, a couple of days when you're going through and you're, you're checking out to make sure, see if you have everything, you've got your, your fresh water um, completely filled up, your gray water tank is empty, you're ready to go for the event do a walk around, make sure that your mobile unit's not leaking, you're not having any oil leaks. And if you notice an oil leak or something um, else going on, antifreeze, make sure that you get those fixed immediately because you don't want to show up at an event and have your mobile unit leaking oil and that getting onto the ground. And then always check with your local health department or districts to see if there's any additional requirements that they might have for you and making sure that you have the proper permits that your health districts might require. And then if I'm sure, ask. When in doubt, always ask. Feel free to reach out to any of us. We're here to help you guys. And then we have just a bunch of resources and all of our resources are going to, they will be on the Washington Stormwater Center's website. Um, so where you want to register for these webinars, um, they've got all of this information there. So we've got um, the links to the Clean Shift the Washington State Department of Health for any food and safety rules and regulations. It's my understanding that you guys are just undergoing a new um, set of rules and regulations. So um, if you're not familiar with those, check with your health department or hopping on the Department of Health website for any updated rules that might apply to you. Um, the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries food truck and trailer information. Again, our pollution prevention assistance. The Washington Stormwater Center, where we'll have all of this information housed, we'll have, um, vid uh, we'll have uh, our recorded videos also on the website. So if you are an operator and your employees didn't attend and you want your employees to attend, you can just go send them to the website and then have them watch that. That actually would probably be a good um, part to your training. So when you're training your staff for your mobile unit, maybe having them watch this video um, and making sure that they understand the pollution prevention side as well as your, your food safety side also. They're both very important to your business. And we've got some FAQs and handouts available. And then going back to your health department or district's food safety program. And then 
how to how to find a pollution prevention specialist near you. Um, so on our the Washington State Department of Ecology Pollution Prevention Assistance website, you'll see all of these in blue are our current pollution prevention specialists. Or we have um, individuals in each of these areas. If you're located in an area that doesn't have a pollution prevention specialist near you, if you reach out to Washington State Department of Ecology, or if you contact anyone on this list, if you go to this um, map and you click on, let's say you're Eastern Washington, click on Spokane, it'll link you to me and I can help find you um, somebody that can help get you those products that you need. If um, we are with a grant with Department of Ecology, so even if I'm in Spokane and you're in Walla Walla or you're in Northeast Tri-County, um, we can get somebody from Ecology to get with you to help get you a spill kit if needed or what other um, services you might have questions on. Reach out to any of our pollution pre prevention specialists and someone can help assist you and get you the information and guidance that you need. And then for more information, um, you can contact myself or Nikki. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for spending your time learning more about pollution prevention. And remember, only rain down the drain. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.